there's been something happening in the Turkey prop community, and that is a situation with a company you all know by the name of NECA, um, if I'm saying it correctly. And um, we'll, we'll get into it in, the, in a minute. But first, I want to introduce our guests for today's interview. Uh, that is Mark and Eric of Moody Pudding Studios. Hello. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, who's behind Moody Pudding Studios now and how did it start? Um, he, Eric's always been behind Moody Pudding Studios, but he didn't really use his Instagram account at all. I didn't really do any social media for yeah. it other than like posting on Facebook creating a group for it but this and it was like back in 2017 I think I think I started it and it really wasn't much it really wasn't any you know in the mainstream until Mark until I met Mark and then he he stepped on about a year and a half into our relationship I felt like I could step on his toes a little bit he was just so much more in sync with the mainstream and like music and I'm the cute he's the horror (laughs) (laughs) but like yeah it's it's I don't know it's it's been successful yeah. ever since he stepped on. He really knows how to reach out. And, you know, I love connecting with yeah. different people. And then I love hearing about it. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's nice. I could finally, like, meet them, too. But, you know, I'm usually behind the camera. Um, it's not the easiest thing for me to do, but it's necessary, especially to tell our story. But also to, you know, I, I want to sort of be an example for people who are in my position, too who are afraid to push themselves to do things like that. So that's another reason we're doing this. I'm glad that uh, that's the journey that y'all were placed on uh, to connect, be together, work together, and to bring you the success where you had now. And success does come with pros and cons, uh, good experiences and bad experiences, as you know, right now. Uh, And that's the beauty of it all. That's the beauty of it all. Um, So... Let's talk about your accomplishments. What have what's your success been like, and what are some hits and misses of that success? Uh, I mean, a great example would be the big elephant in the room. You know, like this whole thing with NECA. Um, that would be like uh, many things. That's like a learning, you know, curve there for me, as far as like how contracts go and how people can say things and stuff. Um, All the business lingo. But all the success has come from, oh my God, we, there's been so many people that I know that he's, he's talked, spoken with and reached out with, and then they'll check in weekly, check in and say like, how are you doing? Are you okay? Like, I mean, like there's been more than just success from the, like within the company. Um, you know, we, we get our setbacks and you know, it doesn't stop us. We still push through that. But a lot of it comes from the the people that he connected with helping us push through, you know, uh, yeah. the bad days. Something you and sometimes it has nothing to do with the business. Yeah. It, you know, it's just I, I get I get really personal. I probably shouldn't because some people think it's unprofessional, but I I like having our clients and our followers understand who they're watching and like how we work and our mental disabilities and my physical disabilities, like we're pushing through. We want to show people that other dogs can do it, can do it still. You know, you just got to believe in what you do, believe in what you do, believe in what you work, you know, what you're working towards and know that that's a goal and not, it just didn't happen yet. It didn't happen yet. So just stop, you know, like think of that. You always got to think of that stuff as like a goal. In my opinion. I think that, there is something special about being able to see the person or the individuals behind the company rather than just seeing them as a company. Like there's a huge difference in tone between Moody Pudding Studios and NECA. Because when you just see the company as a company making company decisions or business decisions, it comes with a certain tone where it's like everything is based off of, well, a business is a business. Uh, like the guy says in Child's Play 3. One of the hardest things about this business is that it is a business. Like, like this is a business. Like, that's the curse. Like, that's the blessing of it and the curse. It's a business. It has to operate a certain way. And decisions are made accordingly. Uh, but I think that 
you can definitely gain empathy and be understood much, much better when people can see the individuals within that. So I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, I can see you guys and understand. I, first things first, I can see that you guys are not some huge conglomerate of people for starters uh operating in some uh, operating in some beehive yeah it's just you two and um then on top of that now let's look at NECA now we see we see the decisions they make they're making such as uh cease and desist am I allowed to use that term as I'm about to mention that have y'all spoken about that I mean yeah that's what that is They, they did send us one um and again it was one of those things where it was like We've been emailing it, you for months. Well, no, it just makes you feel like you're the guilty party because in the in one of the things that said like we are not allowed to forward it or share it, and it was like, well, I mean, and I and I I googled it and it did it said the opposite that you're absolutely allowed to like publicly share or cease and desist if you get one, um, and I'm sure there's stipulations to that. I don't know, but right, it's I don't know how to really think about it. I don't know. My response to their attorney was simply. We don't believe we're doing anything wrong um, and we're going to continue telling our story as, you know, NECA hasn't, has failed to, you know, do their part, do what was promised in emails. I'm just here to tell you what I think I deserve and here are the evidence, here's the evidence, here are the facts, you know, and that's, that's my piece with it. It's just, I just don't feel like why, I don't know why it has to be such a big deal. I don't know why this is a big deal. Yeah. So circling back, I see two people who have obviously put in a great deal of work uh, and uh, you know, basically the small business independents here uh, just doing what they can to, uh, to make it and to make it big, to make it by uh, however you want to put it. And then you see NECA as a company with a brand and legacy making decisions like cease and desist and it's like in comparison it's like this is why uh this is why i it's it, it is important to to see you guys as individuals because we don't see what's going through NECA's brain but we can we can only assume the worst because of what's going on because of what's because what they're doing uh and that's why it's hard to see anything good on their side about this because it's really just how can this be justified right it's like the the negative after negative yeah exactly uh so let's talk about for we'll definitely get to the next situation and be able to hash it all out uh last thing i want to ask before we dive fully into it is aspirations what are some goals for the brand and its main focus Oh, that's a good, I mean, that is a good question. We have so many ideas for it. Um, my goal with the company initially was just to show pieces off and then uh, just grow it like a, like a, like any other like toy company, you know, one day, I don't know. And after meeting and like spending time with, with clients and, especially after like when he picked it up, but even myself, you grow these relationships with people that you never met before over a, over a Chucky doll, you know, Chucky, there's been so much good from Chucky from so many people, you know, that benefit from Chucky and we are no, you know, we're, we're, we're no different. Um, and so like, as, as we met these people, it grew into this idea of we want to like, help too we want to give back too we don't want to be we don't want someone to be in the situation we were in you know and um we want to have the underprivileged artists hired on and pay them to make pieces under the umbrella of moody and credited and lifted you know from that nowhere place that they feel they might have been but it because because they were a fantastic artist for that specific piece and they should deserve that credit. You know, they deserve a window into their life for that moment. Mm -hmm. And I just feeling that empathy, you know, helps you, I think as a business person, Um, you don't want to just grow and roll in money, you know, 
you want community you want people around you you want security you want security you want you know like like like-minded people uh there's just so much more to it than going down the narrow path of of greed you know and you know if we get there we know what to do with our money you know Mm -hmm. beautiful answer uh so (laughs) that uh so uh, which leads me back into the negative situation. How did, since this was, uh, this was, this was a very, uh, you would think ideally that this would be like one of your greatest accomplishments, right? And that, uh, it would definitely fall under that category of big goals for the brand. Uh, so how did that collaboration start, and what's happening with it now? <laughs> 